for me, I think the biggest thing that football taught me was how to overcome adversity. At some point in your life, you're going to have some tough times. You have to have that next play mentality. That cohesiveness and that working together, that's really something special that you can't get in a lot of other areas. When you practice that and you live that in other phases of your life, it, it, it becomes second nature because all you know how to do is fight. It's not an easy game. If it were easy, everyone would do it. You start to appreciate the, the smaller contributions that people make. You don't just look at the big one because you knew it took six or seven other guys who are unsung. And, uh, you know, you, you can't take shortcuts and be successful. Doing what they do to make it possible for the guy getting the press clippings or whatever it might be. In this game, whether it's as a coach or a player. So, um, I would certainly say that, um, you know, you definitely got uh, a very quick lesson in how to overcome adversity playing football. Let's take a look at the teams that just missed the cut. Florida and Auburn, both really good defenses, but I have some questions about their offensive outputs. Those two things can rear its ugly head at the worst possible times. North Carolina had the unfortunate situation of playing in hurricane conditions, but still isn't an excuse to get lambasted like they did versus Virginia Tech. And two mid-major programs that have a ton of talent are the South Florida Bulls and Troy Trojans. The Trojans fought valiantly against Clemson earlier in the season and have been one of the more consistent teams so far in the always wacky Sun Belt Conference. Their quarterback, Brandon Silvers, is playing some really good ball at this juncture of the season. All right, here's 21 through 25, and I like the job that Dave Clawson has done with the Demon Deacons. They are probably the most fundamentally sound football team in college football. Two three and two squads make the list in Oklahoma and Ole Miss. I think both have a chance to definitely make a strong push up the rankings, as well as Arizona State, who are stockpiled with talent, especially on the offensive side of the ball. But keep an eye on Penn State. You're starting to see the impact that new offensive coordinator Joe Moorhead is having on his football team. The Nittany Lions offense is able to put up points in a hurry and can beat you in a multitude of ways. Running back Saquon Barkley is making a strong case for first-team All-Big Ten honors. Some perennial powers here with Miami, Tennessee, and Florida State. All teams are really good but banged up right now, which has them in the middle of the pack on our list. In my opinion, Miami is still the strongest out of the three, and I think one of the best coaching jobs we've seen over the last 10 years is down in Annapolis at the Naval Academy with head coach Ken Neomatololo. He has his midshipmen 4-1 and one on the season, fresh off an upset of the number six Houston Cougars where they set the tempo and the pace in that ball game and was also able to frustrate one of the most explosive offenses in the country. Keep an eye on the mids moving forward and another quietly comes from Kalamazoo, Michigan where the Western Michigan Broncos are 6-0 on the season and boast one of the best receivers in the country in Corey Davis. The Broncos average 49 points a game and have also done it on the defensive side of the ball. Their two toughest tests are yet to come, one this weekend versus Akron and also at the end of the season against the Toledo Rockets. This team has a chance to run a table and go undefeated. They've already knocked off two Big Ten teams in Northwestern and Illinois in the process. Looking at 11 through 15, and you're starting to get into the teams that no one wants to play category with Boise State, Houston, and Virginia Tech. What a job Justin Fuente has done in Blacksburg in his first season. I think the best move he made was retaining defensive coordinator Bud Foster, and the second best move was signing quarterback Gerard Evans. Both have led the Hokies to an impressive 4-1 and one start to the season. Both West Virginia and Utah are the others that you don't want to play in college football. The Mountaineers are off to a quiet 4-0 start on the season, and their defense, in my opinion, has been the biggest reason why. West Virginia is getting stops on third downs. They're creating turnovers and subsequently putting the ball back into the hands of their explosive offense. The Utes are very strong on both sides of the line of scrimmage and have always been a very good defensive team. This year, they're getting good, efficient play from the QB position as quarterback Troy Williams has played well. We'll see how they do without their talented starting tailback Armand Shine moving forward. Moving on to the top 10 in the Baylor Bears, after all of the turmoil, 
is sitting at 5-0. and It's a different style of winning that we've seen this year, and head coach Jim Grobe deserves a ton of praise for the job he's done down in Waco, Texas. Wisconsin and Texas A&M are two really good teams, and I like how the Aggies now have a running game with tailback Travion Williams. And no one is talking about how well Tommy Armstrong Jr. has played this season for Nebraska. His play is a big reason why the Cornhuskers are 5-0 on the season and are atop the Big Ten West Division. They play Wisconsin on October 29th, but Armstrong's passing efficiency has been great. Nine touchdown passes to only two interceptions is exactly what you want to see from him in addition to the five rushing touchdowns on the year. And as long as Louisville has the exciting Lamar Jackson at quarterback, they're going to be in the playoff hunt. We know Jackson's numbers are insane, but it's his leadership and ability to excel in pressure situations that make him and his Louisville Cardinals a very dangerous team. Now we've arrived at the top five, Clemson, Michigan, Ohio State, Washington, and Alabama. The Clemson Tigers have won multiple ways this season. They've had to come back. They've lost big leads. They've blown people out, and they've also won closely contested games. This is a team that's battle-tested and is built to make a run back to the college football playoff title game. The Michigan Wolverines are straight up balling right now. Jabril Peppers is arguably the best pure football player in the country next to Lamar Jackson. Defensively, the Wolverines are very stingy. And on the offensive side of the ball, quarterback Wilton Spate is keeping the offense ahead of the chains and out of bad situations. And this is one of the more physical teams I've seen in Ann Arbor in quite some time. Ohio State is just continuing to be Ohio State, which is a model of consistency. And like Alabama, the Buckeyes are a true football program where they are constantly rolling in new guys that are equally and in some cases better than the premier players that they have to replace. This year's secret superstar is running back wide receiver Curtis Samuel, and Samuel is the second leading rusher on the team with 410 yards, averaging 8.2 yards a carry, and leads the team in receiving with 345 yards and three touchdowns. With the veteran QB JT Barrett at the helm and one of the best defenses in the country, the Ohio State-Michigan end-of-the-season showdown will be one for the ages. At number two are the Washington Huskies, and you want to talk about a team that's flat-out balling, this is it. I'm old enough to remember the 91 team and how explosive they were on both sides of the ball. This team has that look. They play fast and with a ton of confidence. Sophomore quarterback Jake Browning looks like a star in the making, and with the way they can beat you running the football and throwing the football, they'll find themselves in the college football playoffs by season's end. And finally, the Alabama Crimson Tide doesn't rebuild, they reload. Freshman quarterback Jalen Hurts has played like a veteran, and defensively, the Crimson Tide's secondary does a masterful job of not only taking the ball away, but also bringing it back for touchdowns. Alabama is well-balanced on offense. They are constantly able to get pressure on defense and play winning special teams, so it's no surprise that the most complete team in college football is still standing strong at number one midway through the season.